was the brother. I can't remember the name of the guy he's a brother of. But and then he snatched Peter up and he was going to also offer Peter up in the 12th chapter in the book of Acts. Read uh, uh, down by about the 23rd verse. Well, yeah, start. Uh, yeah, start reading the whole chapter. But he was going to do the same thing to Peter. Why? Because it, it because it pleased. He saw it please the people. And, and just a short note. This is why uh, this is why you see these uh, so-called pastors and apostles of hell selling out the gospel from the pulpit because they see that their trickery, that their language that their game, that their verbal hustle, that it pleases the people. So uh, Herod, did, Herod was killed, smoked by an angel in the 12th chapter in the book of Acts because he didn't give God glory. Acts is in the New Testament reprobates again acts is in the new testament and and we also read in acts in the fifth chapter even before that we all know the story of ananias and sapphira who sold something and try to keep back a part of the price so uh, uh uh one of them came in and peter and peter said to them why you why is satan entered your heart to do this thing this is in the fifth chapter in the book of Acts. And what happened was uh, the, uh, 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 the first one dropped and then the, uh, the other one came in a little bit later and she dropped. So again, and this was and this was people dropping dead in the New Testament. Herod dropping dead in the New Testament because he didn't give God glory. Ananias and Sapphira dropping dead individually because they, they, they tried to uh, put a little bit of, they tried to blow smoke on the Holy Ghost and try to keep back part of the price they didn't even have to sell it to tell you the truth they didn't even have to sell that thing they could have or they could have sold it and kept all of it but they was trying to buy that which is available for free that's power of the holy ghost you see and what we also have to understand is that in the book of revelations also that jesus is going to come back and he's going to speak some word and he's going to end this whole thing in a book of revelations the battle at the place that is it, it, it's, it's called megiddo is what it is but it's 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 known uh it, it, it's the valley of megiddo but it's called armageddon very well known uh name or it brings up this imagery and the bible tells us that the armies of the antichrist are going to march down uh to the valley and it's called the valley of decision too it, it, they're going to march down to the valley and the slaying that's going to go on there is going to be so high it comes up to a horse's bridle which is about right here so you have to understand people that this ain't just what Phineas did isn't just some New Testament or uh, some Old Testament stuff uh, 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 he, uh, an angel smote Herod uh, because he didn't give God glory Ananias and Sapphira were slain you see, so God will kill you. And I know you don't want to hear that because you want to say that, uh, uh, but Jesus is about love. And let me tell y'all something, as if there isn't wrath in love. The, the people that are most important to you, especially in your development, and for those of you who have married and, and you and your wife or you and your husband are close, you know that the people that have been most important to you and that you trust the most, Tell you the truth to your face. Where would you be if your mama, grandmama, daddy, whoever it was that raised you didn't show the wrath that goes along with a loving relationship? There is wrath in love. The Bible says, spare the rod, spoil the child. So you, you see, so uh, you have to understand that, that there is wrath in love. And the Bible also tells us God chastises those whom he loves. Chastisement may hurt at the time, but it is a part of that love relationship that you come into when you take on your sonship or your daughtership and, and, and you just start walking uh, with the Lord Jesus. You people have got to understand that. So uh, we see in fellowships, we see, uh, I'm going to talk about, I'm going to talk about the church. So, uh, and, most, and most especially the apostate church. We have uh, weak cowards in pulpits all over this country. We have weak cowards and even the best of them are without a spine. It is a rare thing to find a real pastor that will preach the truth of God's word even when it hurts your feelings. Again, God chastises those whom he loves. And when we talk about avoiding future wrath, if somebody is standing, saying they're standing on behalf of God and they don't speak out the truth to you according to God's word to your face and sacrifice the relationship on behalf of God's word, they have now become 
become the enemy of God. The Bible says friendship with the world is enmity with God. Jesus said you can't serve two masters. That means uh, 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 church leaders, you cannot serve those people's wants and, and, and wicked desires and still serve the God of heaven. You can't do this because again, this is enmity with God and it makes you an enemy of the cross. These these men, uh, these men say, well, well, I love the people. I love the congregation. I'm a shepherd. But it, it, you see, the thing is about that is if you love them so much, why don't you tell them the truth uh, and, and, and sacrifice the relationship on behalf of the Bible because again Jesus said what greater love have anyone than they will lay down their life for their friend and laying down your life we all we always want to have this image of what laying down your life is like you see on TV and the most shows people jumping in front of a bullet somebody shouldn't they no and, and they'll take the bullet and they'll be dying like I, I love you uh, well let, let, let's be a little bit more practical than that let's talk let me tell you about this uh, love for all practical purposes is laying down your life, laying down the, the life in the relationship at that time uh, for the truth. Uh, men, you talk about you love your wife with greater love has anyone than they would lay down the life for their friend. Keep your mouth closed. I'm not saying don't stand up for the gospel, but I'm saying don't be verbally abusing her and talking about you love her. Again, tell the truth to avoid future wrath because anybody who won't speak truth to you, even though it might cost them the relationship, they don't love you. They hate you. Oh, is there a gray area? No. Jesus said you're with me or you, you, you're against me. He who does not gather with me scattereth abroad. So there is. These people stand in the pulpit. And let me let, let me tell you what the, the, these reprobates who are frightened cowards who have become enemies of the cross and are directly responsible for many of the churches being all jacked up, watered down. And they won't do like Phineas who sees sin entering into the camp. They won't do like Phineas who who, 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 who will see a gossiping a, a woman or will see some man looking at women the wrong way and all and, and preachers talking about oh, the God put me up to, to preach and they know that that's a lie. They let them in a pulpit anyway. They wouldn't let a real man of God like Phineas would not let the wolf enter in. God's, God, uh, Jesus called such people hirelings because they see the wolf coming and they, they flee away from the sheep. You fleeing away from the sheep if you're not confronting the sin in the congregation. You're usher you're in a future wrath if you are not uh, uh, confronting the sin in your congregation. You are signing people's death certificates, spiritual and physical, if you are not dealing with sin in the congregation. But these people uh, say these things, and I know because on one on my many YouTube profiles, uh, not just the one you're seeing this on, people are always kicking up, and this is what they say. You can't judge nobody. Sure we can. They misuse the scriptures in Matthew, the, the seventh chapter in the gospel well, according to Matthew, they misuse the scriptures in the second book of Ro in the second chapter in the book of Romans to say you can't judge nobody. No, Jesus taught us how to judge, when to judge, and when not to judge. If, if you can't judge nobody, how do you even keep order in your home? If you can't judge nobody, uh, why do you read your kid's report card and they get bad marks? You, you will put them on punishment, ground them, talk to them, do something. You are judging your own children based on what somebody else is telling you. You don't even cross the street at a busy intersection without judgment. I look left, I look right, uh, there's no cars coming. It's safe to go. Judgment is a determination. People, Phineas made a judgment. He took the javelin. He ran through the camp. He ran those sinners through and it was well pleasing for the Lord. Jesus made a judgment during his earthly ministry and chased those money changers out of the temple. You people have got to stop being cowards and saying that you're believers in Jesus because Jesus was not a coward. Jesus saw sin. Jesus dealt with sin. You cannot say that you are standing up to preach the gospel on behalf of the Lord God of hosts and you are not willing to step up to the plate and deal with sin in the camp. You're killing your congregation spiritually because you're letting reprobates run around in there and you tell and teach them you can't judge nobody. You, uh, a pastor, they, they good at saying, oh, I'm going to let the Lord deal with that as if from Genesis to Revelation, the Lord didn't use his people standing on his word to deal with his people. And there were times also that God used heathen nations to deal with his people and to pass his judgment on 
people, they, and, and what, why they do that? Because they rely on their strategy and methods instead of the divine plan of God. My